So just a quick disclaimer and so you know what this video is going to be about. I'm not going to be talking about how to make content creation your full-time job or how to monetize and grow your YouTube channel in 2023. There are so many helpful videos on that subject and I've linked a few in the description box. So if that's what you're looking for, I would go ahead and just watch one of those videos instead. Otherwise, feel free to stick around and maybe grab a cup of coffee or a tea and we can chat through all the reasons why I think you should start a vlog channel and get a Y2K camcorder in 2023. down this video, it's probably because there's already a part of you that's interested in vlogging or at least in Y2K camcorders. And my hope is that this can be the video that pushes you to actually take action and get started. This is like a wordy way of saying it, but basically it allows you to fulfill an intrinsic desire to extend the present moment and through the way that we extend the present moment and the present moments that we choose to extend we are able to forge our identity and to understand the identity of others basically i see vlogging as the modern day equivalent to the shared diary People have been keeping diaries forever. That's obviously not a new thing. So much about history um, is through people keeping documents of daily life. But I guess I have always thought of diaries as private things, as things that people kept really only for themselves. But it was so interesting in this article, these women in New England were keeping diaries that were meant to be shared. It was a social event for when friends and family would come over, they would read their diaries out loud and use them as a way to bond with the people close to them. People were scrapbooking long before even the 20th century, saving physical items from concerts or train tickets from trips that they had been on, and they kept them in books that were to be shared at later times with friends and family and children. There's something so intrinsic in this urge to preserve the present moment and not only to preserve it, but to repurpose it into something tangible that we can re-experience over and over again. It's through this process that we're able to forge and share our identities and we fulfill social connection by looking at these sort of social artifacts that people have made and seeing what moments they experienced and chose to preserve and how they chose to preserve it. Humans have created so much technology, I think, with the purpose of enhancing the way that we can preserve the present moment and to create these social artifacts and we live in such a cool time where not only can we write down all of our thoughts into a journal but we can speak them into a camera that records what's around us and what we looked like in that moment and how we sounded. I don't think there's anything narcissistic or vain in wanting to preserve the way that you are moving through life and your passage of time and things that are significant to you. I think it's the most natural creative process that we have. And I'm gonna talk about all the different values to doing it, but I think the main one is that there is something intrinsic in us that loves to create these social artifacts and vlogging is such a cool way to do that. Image creating technology and social media rely on this intrinsic desire to create and consume social artifacts. And the social artifacts themselves, like sugar, are natural and can enhance our experience of life. But I think short form social media kind of works more like corn syrup where it's exploiting something natural, our natural desire for social connection and filling us up with something artificial. I think one way to move away from this sort of oversaturation of moment collecting is to get an older camera. I'm 
so passionate about this point. Um, I've already made a video about uh, 2000s cameras that I have that I've collected and I actually have picked up a few more so I probably have to make an updated video on that soon. Um, but the process of choosing what moments to preserve where in each occasion you actually have to decide that there's a moment worth capturing. I think those choices are what enables you to forge your identity. Older cameras force you to make those choices in ways that I don't think iPhones can. You have to choose when you want to get your camera out. It's not just constantly in your hand ready to record. You have a limited amount of storage space. With these early 2000s ones, it's not as super inconvenient as film, which film I think really to the extreme or disposable cameras, like you really have to choose the moments that you're going to preserve. Um, you have a quite a bit more freedom with the digital cameras, but not as much as you have with iPhones. I think it's just the right amount of attention and intention required when you're using one of these 2000s digicams. So I have this camcorder from my parents. It's a Sony Handycam DCR SX63 and all the memory card and how I transfer the videos and all that stuff that's in my cameras video if you wanted to check that out. But a lot of my childhood memories were actually filmed on this camera which makes it extra nostalgic and I'm not even gonna get into why I love the quality of these, how I think they look more like memory and how you get a unique experience out of every video that you take. Um, I said I wasn't going to get into it and then I started getting into it, but you can find these for pretty cheap on eBay or on Facebook Marketplace. You can also find them sometimes at thrift stores. Um, I think half of the fun is digging around to find your own unique one. If you're going to be doing mostly vlogging, I would recommend getting a camcorder over one that's made more for pictures, but you can do the same thing with a digicam. I mean, also like right now, I'm this isn't a vlog I guess but I'm using like a Canon T8i which is just a pretty standard like DSLR I think you can get the same concept from another digital camera it doesn't have to be a Y2K one but I do think it's kind of more fun to get these older ones something like a Canon camera like the one that I'm using now is more expensive and it's bigger like I think it would be annoying to lug this around, like I don't ever take this camera anywhere also because I'm scared of breaking it, but I take this everywhere. I don't think for you to get the benefits that I'm talking about out of the process of vlogging that you need to have your vlog on public. I think you could have it on unlisted. I think you could even vlog and put these videos together with things that you love and moments that make you happy. and not even ever upload it, like just keep a folder on a hard drive that is not going to get destroyed and then in 10 years just you and maybe you and your kid can go back and watch those videos. I have friends that have kind of gotten off of social media, like especially off of like Instagram and TikTok, and they've started making five minute vlogs of just these little moments of their days. Um, and they just use their phones too, like you totally can just do this on your phone. I just think there's something special about doing it with an older camera, but... But yeah, they make like these little clipped up five minute videos with voiceovers about what they've been up to in the last month and they send it out with a newsletter with a few more updates and like pictures and they keep it unlisted, like it's not a public thing, it just goes to eight or ten of their friends that they want to keep up with, and I think it's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I don't think there's any reason for you to have a public vlog unless you're looking to build community outside of what you normally could just in person. That's what I like about posting these things publicly is that I've been able to meet people from different parts of the world just like through the internet and through sharing my life on this channel. But if you have any like, you know, privacy concerns or you just don't want random people to be able to see the sort of special moments of your life, I don't think there's any reason why you should put your vlogs on public. This might be a really dramatic way of putting this and I might also just be 
aging myself, but I think that short form content is kind of ruining our lives and our brains, both creating it and consuming it. I'm not gonna talk all that much about it for the sake of this video, but there's a lot of people talking about it on the internet. I maybe will find some articles or videos talking about it to link below. But to sum up my thinking on this as best as I can, short form content and the apps that share it are made primarily to entertain. Long form content allows for more room to actually connect to the person that's creating it and for them to, like I've said a million times, forge their identity. I think it's really hard to forge your identity in 15 seconds um, and also because those platforms aren't designed for you to build community, they're designed for the highest number possible of people to be as entertained as possible. I might just have rose colored glasses on about this or like be in my own bubble, but I think that people really miss the connectivity of older social medias like Facebook and Instagram or even like my space prior to the prioritization of high volume short form content and influencer marketing where you could see the moments that were being chosen by your friends or people that you chose to follow and feel like you were able to connect with them. I've been using this app called Camcord which is similar to TikTok but it's for long form content and you just film it on your phone but it's like five to ten minute videos it feels so much more human like the people that i'm seeing on there even though like i don't know them at all i'm getting different glimpses of their life and the moments that they're choosing to capture as opposed to when i scroll on tiktok kind of just feeling entertained which i think there's a time and a place for that too i don't think there's anything wrong with entertainment i think short form content is a great way to sort of expand your reach or if you do have a business i think there are great benefits to that it's basically like you can run free ads i just don't think it fills our social desire or our desire to consume these social artifacts that I keep talking about. From the creator side, I think posting to YouTube feels more like I'm learning skills and slowly building a body of work. But TikTok, every time I post on TikTok, it feels more like playing the lottery and the intermittent reward of virality is really addictive. YouTube doesn't feel addictive it feels more like I'm building something slowly for myself that I want to keep returning to and I think that's kind of the key. Point number, reason number something I don't know actually. If you start a vlogging channel and you get yourself a cool Y2K camcorder, you're going to stop thinking that your life is so boring. I get comments all the time about people wanting so badly to start a YouTube channel or how they always wanted to have a YouTube channel but their lives are just too boring. I really believe it works the opposite way. If you get a Y2K camcorder, you're gonna find that things in your life that you think are boring look cool and interesting and different through a different lens. You probably are already doing so much more in your life that's worth filming than you realize. This kind of leads me into the next batch of reasons why when you're vlogging it's kind of like you're bringing a friend along with you places so you get to sort of talk and share your thoughts as you're going along which feels way less lonely and two you get to explore not only your life but your life through another lens. You get to explore what is gonna look Cool with this particular camera that you have. How does this camera capture light? Your window to you right now probably just seems like boring. It's just your bedside window with your empty water bottle and your candle sitting there. Like, no one cares about that. That's what you think. But then if you record that with a cool camera that you got, you just have this moment of your life, something that you see every day now is preserved, and you put that into a video, and you put your thoughts on top of that, suddenly something that was so boring becomes something so special to you. And I think if it's special to you, 
you, it's gonna seem special to other people. That's a very long roundabout way of saying that if you start a vlog channel, I think you will notice that your life is a lot less boring than you think it is. So on top of being able to enjoy your alone time more or appreciate small things more, there are so many skills that you will gain if you start and keep up with the vlog channel. So let's just go through them. One, public speaking. I know it's not like public public, but talking to a camera is super uncomfortable at first. Eventually you learn how to do that and get comfortable doing that. And then that transfers to being able to have conversations with people or being able to speak on a stage or in a public setting. And when you're listening back and you're having to edit your vlogs, you're gonna notice things about the way that you talk and some bad habits that you have, and you're gonna improve. You're gonna stop saying like as much, which I still am so bad about, but every time that I go to edit a vlog and I see that I've said like 200,000 billion times and I have to edit out every single one of them, the next time that I go to vlog, I think I say it a little bit less, or at least I have awareness of what I sound like and how I'm presenting my thoughts. You'll learn how to present your thoughts. You can have all these ideas in your head, but if you actually have to communicate them, there's a skill involved in that that you'll grow only through doing it. On the same side of that, you will learn the skill of writing because if you want to do any kind of voiceovers or add a storyline to your vlog, you're going to have to write down your thoughts in a concise way. You're learning videography, like even if you just take your camera out and record a few shots of your street and your dog in the backyard, you're still learning something about the difference between what you see and what's in the camera or where the light looks the nicest. Video editing itself is just an extremely helpful skill and you can get other jobs or go into other fields just from learning that. And there's a lot of free software. I have a video also on editing that you can check out if you want to learn how I edit. If you want to do fun mixed media elements in your video or little animation bits, then you're learning the skills of animation and mixed media art. You're learning visual art, you're learning graphic design if you're making thumbnails. If you do decide that you want to post your vlogs publicly or you want to grow your channel, then you're gonna be learning about marketing, you're gonna be learning about branding, you're gonna be learning about analytics. There are so many skills to be learned through the process of vlogging and uploading and sharing to YouTube. In terms of a hobby, I can't think of many hobbies that encompass so many different skills. If you're a musician, you can learn how to score. I work as a freelance musician doing songwriting. I never really had that much experience writing music, background music, and since I started making my own music for videos, I've learned so much about what kind of sounds I want to create a certain mood. And that's like an entire, another section of all of this. But yeah, it just teaches you to be resourceful, it teaches you time management because you're gonna realize when you start editing how much time things take and if you wanna upload on a schedule, that's something I haven't really even gotten close to figuring out yet. I could just like go on and on about all the different skills that you can grow through running a YouTube channel of any kind, not just a vlog channel, but um, yeah, I'm afraid this video is already gonna be really long, so. I'm gonna move on from that. You clicked on this video because there's already a part of you that's interested in it. I hope that you'll take this as a sign or as encouraging words to do it, get started, be accepting of your first few vlogs, not being exactly perfect or whatever you want and know that it's a slow burn, it's a skill building process and when you have these videos to share with your friends or to look at in like a couple of years. You're gonna be so grateful that you started doing this and that you learned the language of editing and your own voice through editing. So yeah, do it, I can tell you do it. And if you do start a channel and you do choose to make it public, please comment so I can check it out. I love watching people's videos. The coolest thing to me is when people tag me in videos that they've made that are inspired by something that I do in a video or just to tag me in it and um, I get to watch them and see little 
pieces of their lives and connect with them and I just think it's the best thing ever. So yeah, tag me if you end up starting your channel because I would love to watch your videos. And if you want some editing tips, you can check out my editing videos. If you want some camera tips, you can check out my camera video. Um, otherwise, I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. And best wishes with your channel. Okay. I'm like lean back so weird my arms have fallen asleep. Bye. See you next time.